there are many things about the game Dreams that's wholly unique and innovative, and while Artstream doesn't even scratch the surface of what you can do in it, I think it truly encapsulates what Dreams has to offer. It's by far the most impressive creation I've played in Dreams, which goes without saying, as it was made by the developers of the game, but it made me realize Dreams' potential for crafting engaging experiences that anyone can exploit, not just the devs. That's compelled me to make a video about Artstream. I wouldn't feel confident in reviewing Dreams, as I've barely tinkered with its engine, and there's otherwise just so much content, so I chose to cover this short campaign instead. It should make for a nice little breather among the long videos I've been sharing out this year. Given that this stream is so short, I can't talk about it without spoiling, so I recommend experiencing it beforehand. With that said, let's analyze why Artstream is so good. I've won Mustache of the Year seven years in a row. What's your claim to fame? Hmm, how to approach this section for a game within a game. I might as well give some facts about Dreams itself. It was created by Media Molecule for the PlayStation 4 and had beta access as early as April of 2019, but the full game wasn't available before February 14th of 2020. I actually got the beta version, so I've had the game for a while, and I got the main version for free because of that, which was dope. Artstream is pretty much Dreams' campaign mode, and allows streamers to reuse its assets for their own creations. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. I can all go and... The story of Artstream follows the main character named, well, Art, which was honestly quite the revelation to me. Art is a musician who plays the double bass, and he had a falling out with his band, so the story is about him trying to come to terms with his failures, move beyond them, and reunite with the band again. Away from Layla, away from the band, away from my music, I'm never gonna stop falling. I didn't expect this story to hit me so hard, but it did, and I enjoyed pretty much every second of it. Dude, we're getting the band back together is one of my favorite episodes from Phineas and Ferb, and this story gave me that vibe, executing it to such a good degree. It has its cheesy moments, but I think it worked well for this type of story, and I gobbled it up. The dream might have been short, movie length in fact, but at least it didn't overstay its welcome, and it was so well paced. Although we may not have gotten much time to know these characters, I reveled in their reunion. It's honestly one of my favorite endings to a video game. I found Art interesting. He's very stubborn and aggressive, but also has his moments of humor and kindness. His development throughout the creation was good, realizing that he acted like a dick towards his friends, and rediscovering what it means to be a team. It was nice seeing a childlike side to him, imagining all of these wonderful adventures with the robots and puppets. It's something many can relate to. I was also a big fan of the blue guy Hector, who not only brought some hilarious musical performances, but also acted as Art's inner demons and basically the antagonist in many forms, including a train conductor, bouncers, and a crow hybrid named Thornbeak. I love that when you approach him after his Tickets Please musical, he shouts Ticket! 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 That always cracks me up. The other band members were neat too, specifically Layla and Herb. Herb was extremely minor, but he reassured us that he never had any ill will towards Art, and was just worried about his friend. That even got foreshadowed in the lamp scene near the beginning, where he was the only one to ask if Art's okay. Layla was pretty cool too, and she certainly has great chemistry with Art, seen especially in the cabin. Also, her voice is absolutely beautiful, really selling that performance at the end. Come on, Debug. Let's find it. A secret weapon. The gameplay of this creation is so varied and has a big focus on platforming, which is right up my alley. The Foxy and Francis and Debug segments reminded me of Tearaway, which makes sense, since the creators behind this game also made that prior to this. Art's gameplay is very simplistic, at least initially, as it's pretty much just a point and click adventure, but that makes for some fun dialogue and very detailed backgrounds. I quite enjoyed the train section where Art was forced to confront his former band members and figure out how to prevent a crash, as well as the part in the cabin where Art is slowly walking up the stairs and you have to keep an eye out for Hector, so it doesn't mess with Art's footing. While the first few stages of Foxy and Francis didn't offer much, I like the way they control and they have distinct moves that can accomplish different tasks. Francis has a big hammer and can ground stomp, which is necessary to overcome certain hurdles, and Foxy throws discs that are sometimes used to create new paths. 
I love the way their gameplay evolved, being granted guitar gums, which was basically an evolution of Foxy's space gameplay, and I enjoyed his the most, so I had no complaints. A set piece I found interesting was the one where you have to be mindful of whenever Thornbeak screams, as it shakes the whole area and causes deadly hazards to spin. It wasn't very challenging, like most of the game, but it had a cool concept, and the guitar stage did get a bit tough with those shooting bombs walking towards you. Lastly, there's the debug gameplay, which changes the least, but that might have been for the best, since debug controls like a charm, and I loved it every time the game transitioned to him. His platforming sections are so fun and full of life, literally as you recharge all the dark areas with light. But these are not hard at all, but that's part of why I like them so much, as they're just relaxing to go through, and the platforming is really enjoyable due to the smooth controls and well-designed layout of the levels. Later on, you also get to play as a different robot called LED, who grants even more mobility in the air, and can suck and shoot stuff, which is cool in a weird way. The final level goes absolutely ballistic, where the three different gameplay styles culminate, although this time they're all vehicle levels. Art suddenly finds himself using his double base as a groovy laser gun on top of a car to shoot down Thornbeak. Yeah, I really just said that. I like the controls here, but I think it should have been easier to steer while in mid-air, since I often missed a few landings due to approaching ramps slightly off. The driving then switches to debug and LED riding on router, and there's just something about riding big robots that feels so satisfying. Then Foxy and Francis enter the fray on a flying lawn swing, which probably controls the worst, as I find it very easy to hit the walls, but it's still fairly good. The level switches between these gameplay styles, until the car with art on top all of a sudden starts flying, and it switches to a 2D perspective, where you shoot at locks and enemies. It also involves the final boss Thornbeak, which is fun to fight, and this whole thing acted as an awesome final crescendo for the gameplay. Possess me. Help me bring Layla back. Yeah, that's it. Layla, you feeling this? It was hard for me to talk about the gameplay without mentioning the presentation, since that's most certainly what sticks out the most about this creation, and Media Molecule in general. I mean, just look at Tearaway, it's stylistic as hell, what with its lifelike paper world that gives Paper Mario run for its money. Art stream is just as artistic, if not more, and there's personality to be found everywhere. The locations Foxy and Francis explore can easily change in tone, going from really bright and colorful to dark and dreary on a dime, and vice versa. The guitar level cranked it up a notch in terms of audio design, as the guitar fire syncs up with the background music and makes it all the more badass. As I said, Debug brings back light to a dark world and it's beautiful to witness, and Debug himself is super expressive for a robot. The settings Art finds himself in are the most pleasant to look at, which is good since a lot of these places are pretty much static shots that you'll spend time in. The final level is a great example of imagination running wild, truly showcasing a splendor of artistry. Other than the stunning visuals, what really set Artstream apart for me was its musical aspect, which packed so much charm and made me laugh on numerous occasions. Tickets Please is such a catchy song and features a silly dance by Hector that easily beats out any Fortnite dance. Well, it might not beat Orange Justice, but the rest? Totally. The Chill Out song was funny and definitely lived up to its name, as it was very relaxing too. Well, maybe not if you're trying to grab all the collectibles that can be found all throughout the game. These are resources that can be used for own creations, and I've actually used some myself. Just look at Bouncer Hector getting geared by the door. Anyway, I love how Chill Out was initiated by Art accidentally triggering it. That's also how the next musical number starts, where four Bouncer Hector start singing about really wanting that password. What a fire diss track that was, I mean, Art didn't stand a chance. Gotta love how they imitated the Bohemian Rhapsody music video, even in hand puppet form. The cabin duet between Layla and Art was also good, and more involved, thus longer, which was neat. Lastly, there's the band performance of Time Moves Slow, which is not only an absolutely terrific song, sung by an absolutely beautiful singing voice, but the music video for it is a true work of art, quite literally, as it shows Art's struggles with his inner demons that the whole dream has been about. What a fantastic way to end it, I just felt all good inside. Sure, it can sound good on its own, but with other instruments, it sounds like magic. So, if it wasn't already clear, I obviously really liked Artstream. The writing was quite simple, yet super effective, and it made me care for Art's journey. 
The gameplay is highly varied and fun, and given how short the campaign is, there's never a dull moment. Maybe outside of how easy it is, or having a few barely frustrating designs, but it's mostly just a relaxing experience. That's especially furthered by the fantastic music and visuals that makes it truly unforgettable. I'm giving Artstream the rating of 8.5 out of 10. I don't think I can quite put it up there with the best of the best, but it's great, and it expertly fulfills its purpose of showcasing what the Dream engine is capable of, and might inspire players to create, or at least anticipate more impressive creations like this in the future. If you don't have dreams, then you should totally get it. I mean, it's an infinite amount of games for the price of just one. And if you do already have dreams, but haven't played Artstream, then I implore you to try it out. It's a great experience that can potentially awaken the dreamer within you. I'm Arcadon, and hopefully, you'll see me next time!